Today we're going to work with our border function. The border function is category number five. And in category number five, I'm going to go to folder two. Folder two looks like it's just decorations to put around a buttonhole, but you can use these elements for anything you like. I'm going to take 07, it's a very small design, and say set. I'm going to come to edit, rotate, rotate it once, say OK, come to copy, and move that one down as close to that one as I can get. Okay. With the two on the screen, I just want to get the alignment tool to work for me, so I'm going to do this and have the alignment tool straighten them out. Okay, let's say OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and group it final together, and I'm going to take the whole thing and move it up to the top. All right, and now you can see it's telling me which hoops it's going to fit in and which hoops it's not. Because I only bought my, brought my 5x7 hoop, I better bring it down. I'm going to go into the settings and load my 5x7 hoop so I can see where my margins are, where my design is. Now I'm going to say OK. Loading a hoop in the background is only giving you the dimensions and the area of the hoop to work with. It's not going to stitch it out. It's just giving you an image so you can work with your design. Now I'm going to come into my border function, and I'm going to tell it, it's telling me we're working vertically, or we can work horizontally. We can cut across one at the top, uh, split one on sideways, we can add one to the top, take one away from the top, uh, scrunch them together, and stretch them out. If we click on horizontal, we get the same functions. So here I'm going to come and I'm going to click on the plus at the bottom because I want to add one to the bottom. All right. And I don't have a lot of room there, so I'm going to move it up just a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to get my reference stitch. And with my reference stitch, I want it to be down here. So I'm going to use these big arrows and move it down. And now what I want to do, I want to put a reference stitch in the center bottom and then one in the left corner and right corner. If you can't see the reference stitch, it's really hard to see. You might more than likely can see the ones in the corner than the center one. It's just like a little black line. If you can't see it, watch the screen as you click that off and on, and pretty soon you'll see it pop up. And we're going to say OK. Right. So what this is, I'm going to go to embroidery and I'll explain what I had done here. All right. So in embroidery now, you can see my design. And the neat thing about any time you use the border function, it will color sort all the elements you put in. All right. So it's color sorting the elements. But it's considering one top piece is an element and then the bottom is an element. So what I want to do now, let's say I've already sewed this out. And I sewed it out in a smaller version, but you're going to see what happens. So it, if you can see where my reference stitches are on my sew out, you're right across here and down here, okay? So we're going to come over here and we're going to go backwards. Ah, how many of you knew you could just click on the color bar and go to that color? So I'm just going to click on the color bar and go to that color. But I'm going to, I need to be at the end of it. And I want to see the very bottom. Okay, so that would be where it's going to sew out. Say OK. All right, so we're going to say that we already sewed this out. If you can see my pattern in my machine, on the hoop on my machine, I sewed it out up here and I have reference stitches down here. So what I want you to imagine now, I'm not going to take my hoop apart because I want to show you something else with it. So you're going to imagine now that this fabric is on this hoop, okay? And I'm going to see if I can just sew out the reference stitches. Hoops upside down don't work. 
Okay. All right, so I'm going to advance. It's telling me there's 1549. So I'm going to go 100 more and 649. And I'm going to look. No, that's still a design. So I'm going to go plus 10. And I want to get, now, that's starting my reference stitches. Okay. So if I sewed that out right now, it would have the reference stitches. And it's all done. I take it out of the hoop. And I take this piece and I bring it to the top. All right. I have a new piece of stabilizer in there. And I tell my machine, you have to be at zero. Tell my machine, go up to center top. Okay. So now my crosses and my reference stitches are up there. And I would have to take this fabric. I should have put the hoop on, sorry. I, I would have to take this fabric out and this piece of fabric would be way up here and these reference marks would be up here. So I could keep adding on, coming down, coming down. Okay, and it's once you get used to doing that process, it's really quite easy because your needle will show you where you are. I'm gonna go back and show you with the other one and say, okay, just so you get a good understanding. And I'm going to delete that. In the sewing functions on your machine, you have stitches that are similar to category five. And I know in my classes, I always make everybody sew these out because they're large enough that you can use them on your sashing if you want. But that's just in sewing to come down. So now they've added a bunch of these same stitches in embroidery. And so I took the tulip before. I'm going to take just the wave and any of these from 048 down to 56 would be good stitches for down your sashing. So I'm going to put my other hoop back in. And then I'm going to say set. Now they always have been quite small, but I could come in to edit and increase the size. So I'm gonna to touch the icon on the right, I'll say okay to resize, and then I'm gonna stretch it out large. Whoop, can't go too large because I'm only using my five by seven again. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it up towards the top of the hoop. All right, and I'm gonna say, Okay, now I'm going to come in to my border function again, and I'm going to tell it I want you to add one to the bottom. And I want to add another one to the bottom. And I could keep doing that for as much as I needed. I want to go to my preview and make sure they're completely connected. Yes, they are. And anytime there's a slight gap right there, but I can move them up and fill that in. So I'm going to say close. And I'm going to take one away from the bottom and take that one away. Now, if I move this very top one to the bottom more, it might connect. We'll say, OK. And then I'm going to go back to my border. I'm going to add one more and one more there. Let's see. If I have to scrunch them together, I can. But I'm going to put reference stitches on these two. So I always come down to the bottom. I always put center and left and right, just so I can keep everything straight. And I'm going to say, OK. Now what I'm going to do, I want to see where it will fit on this hoop that I've already stitched on. So I'm going to take a picture of my hoop so I can see where I could move that design. And what it's going to do, it's going to actually scan the fabric to help me line things up and move it over. Sometimes you might accidentally take your fabric out of your hoop and then realize you still have three or four stitch steps to go. It's quite easy to line it up to go back. Now it's not showing very well, but you can see it here. And I can see where my design is, so I need to move that over so it's not on top. All right. So I'm going to bring it over here. And I can move it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to say embroidery on this because it's only going to take a couple of minutes. One thing, if I want to take off the camera in the background right now, I can. I can turn it off there. Or I could turn it back on. But I'm going to close that and go to embroidery. And we know it's going to fit on there, so we're going to say OK. And I'm going to go back to my projector and just make sure where everything is. So if you miss taking your hoop off, what you can always do, have your design still on the screen. Hopefully it was centered or you remembered where you moved it. And then you can have your camera take a picture of your fabric and then line the two up together. Or you can use the projector. Any of you that are trying to do the dream big panel, the projector and camera, oh my gosh, they're so worth it for that project. So here it is. The projector always shows an image of three, three by five. That's all the image that they show. Your design is bigger, so if you touch here, you'll see it turn blue, and when it turns blue, you can move it down just to see what's happening, all right? You have different backgrounds you can choose. This one's on white right now. We'll choose gray and look up my fabric, and that's gray, and take, turn the black. So you can change the background to see it better, depending on what color threads. Recently, I was working on, I think, the Dream Big panel, and I was taking a picture, and I couldn't see my threads. They were kind of light on my fabric. So I went into the color palette and changed the thread color to a bright red. Then I can see it when I projected it. It was light, a lot easier. So I'm going to go, I can move my design on the screen with these arrows, OK? These arrows move the design. This one will move the projector. And I'm going to say OK. All right. It's only going to take one minute, so we're going to just take a minute and sew this out. Here's a little trick I learned a long time ago. If you have a long tail sticking out, all you have to do is come and use your scissor cutter. It'll cut that off. What's left will get buried in the fabric and you won't have to stop and trim that away. So we're going to say OK. And it's just going to take a minute to sew this out. Grab a glass of wine so you can continue sewing. Now it's going to sew the reference stitches. Okay, so it did the right corner. Now it's going to do the center and then left. And then we're done. Okay. Okay, all right. So this is completely done now. So I want you to imagine if I take this out of this hoop, you saw the reference stitches here, and I'm gonna take, and I don't hoop this this time. I put a piece of um, stabilizer in my hoop, and I spray it with some temporary spray or adhesive. And it's just kind of floating on top. And the reason I want it to float on top is because it's much easier to get it lined up. So I'm going to touch this until it go to the top. That's where my reference stitch is. If I come down with my needle and it's exactly in my point, but I have to check the sideways ones because I know me. So I'm going to come over and check this one. Oops, sorry, I've got to touch the top corner. 
always do the reverse of what you did. So now I'm going to have to start over. Bring this up here. Okay, so there's one corner. Let's try the center again. But you can make yards and yards of lace or anything you want, just edging, anything you want using this method. You don't have to have a border hoop and it's just quick and easy. When I find where I want it and it's all lined up, then I would press this down firm on my sticky stabilizer. And then I would just say, okay, and press embroidery and go. And it'll keep lining everything up. I think it's really cool. One thing on the reference stitches, it, um, you don't need to use the reference stitches just for the border function. In other words, I'm gonna go return now. Turn my needle up. I'm gonna go return. And if I'm in the border function, I can take that reference stitch and put them anywhere I want. So if I've done a very large design or like edge to edge quilting, I can come in and put a reference stitch on the sides to help me line up. If I wanted to add more elements to this horizontally, I could change to horizontal and fill my whole screen in. If I decide I don't like one there, I can cut a row off. When you tell it to split it and cut it, a knife pops up. And then with the knife, once you hit the knife, it activates and cuts that section off. You won't see it come off until the next screen. What if I want to take some off vertically? So there again the knife popped up. And take the knife and it's off. So now we're going to go OK and see what we're left with. So there's the design and we can cut that one out or take these one away, either one we want, and delete that section. So that is using your border function. I think it's really cool. When I've done a lot of very, very large cross stitch designs, and I'm talking over um, 90 thread changes and they're 27 by 36, then I come in and I get my reference stitch and I'll put them up in the top left corner, middle and bottom right corner. Then when I sew it out and I'm in embroidery, I have to do the reverse. So I'll go to the top one, I'm sorry, go to the top left over here because your fabric is over there now and the reference stitches are there. So you have to know where that point is and then just line those all up just like we did with the others. It really is a good function and I bought it for the reference stitch to help me line up when I do very large designs. I hope this was helpful. Oh, one thing I want to clear up before we go off. If I touch my camera and say on, it still has the background fabric on there. The only way you can get rid of it permanently is to go into settings, go to page 10, touch the word delete and say okay. While I'm on this screen, let me tell you something too. So if you've chosen fabric thickness sensor on, you cannot take a picture of your fabric. It won't work, it just won't let you do it. So if you have trouble getting the camera to activate, come into settings and make sure you don't have the fabric thickness sensor turned on. And then you can delete the fabric, say okay. We're going to use the camera again in a couple minutes, but right now I'm just going to go return and delete what I have. <laughs>